I had a request for NFS shares, and I think that's a really good request because NFS shares are something that we're all probably going to have to do at some point, uh, but no one really does them, and no one really kind of understands how to do them sometimes. So I'm going to just do a quick overview on NFS shares. So if I come over my storage here and my data sets, let's say I wanted to share my media data set. So right now you'll see in the roles, nothing is shared. So if I say create NFS share, it's going to give me exactly what I want to do here, which is great. I'm going to enable it. This is going to give me the option here in networks and hosts to block people. So for example, if I said I want to protect this and I don't want anybody else to be able to mount this, I can put in a network here. So it'll tell you how to do that. If you want to do that, it needs to be in sitter notation. So it's probably going to be in slash 24 for a lot of you guys. So for me, it would be 1099.0.0. That would be how I would protect it. So only the 1099 network would be able to see, um, 1099.0 network would be able to see what's going to be, what's going to, be on this NFS share. Now, this is not like SMB where we have to have users and things like that. This is basically just how to get this thing going. So I'm gonna not gonna I'm gonna leave this wide open. So basically, I'm just saying I want to just create that share, and now it's shared. So in this case, now that this is shared, I can mount it from a different Linux system. So, for example, this is my terminal. And if I want to mount this drive, now that I just did that, there's one thing you might want to do first. In this case, you're going to want to install NFS Comet if you don't already have it. So I'm going to copy this command here. If you don't already have that, like that, uh, well, I'm in Fedora, but basically this is would be what you would install if you don't have NFS Comet in here. So for you guys that are running Debian or for or Ubuntu, which is with most people, you're going to want to use this command. Um, because I'm on Fedora, I wouldn't use this command. I would use something else. But anyway, so let's come in here and let's actually do a mount. So let's do a sudo mount. I'm going to include this in the video description, NFS. All right, so now here's what we need to do. The first thing we're going to do is where it is. So sudo mount type slash t nfs. Now it's telling, asking me, I need to pass two variables. Where is where I'm mounting and where do I want it mounted to? So in my case, it's going to be in 1099.0.191, which is the address of my Trinos server, which you see here. Now I need to know where within that server is the export path. In this case, it's mount tank media. How do I know that? How do I know what my export path is? Let's come over here to shares. See this path right here, Mount Tank Media? This is exactly what I need to copy and paste. This is where it is. This is the address of my server, and this is the path of the NFS share. Okay, Mount Tank Media. So I want I want that entire share, uh, and I want to put that locally on Mount. So this second part is like, hey, where on my local system do I want that to go? And that's where I want it to go. I want it to go to slash Mount. It says it did it. Right, so that because nothing happened, it shows that it worked. So now if I cd into mount like that, and I'll show you the list, look at that, all these things. Now let's talk about permissions. See how it's highlighted green? That's because I have wide open permissions. Wide open. But maybe I don't want to have wide open permissions. Maybe I say, hey, um, I want to make sure that only the, this is 568, this is apps. Apps is the owner and apps is the group, but there is no apps user on this computer, this Fedora computer that I'm on right now. Um, this is who I'm logged in on Fedora, so that's the name of, of the user. So, because these direct these all these directories are wide open, I can make adjustments here. So, for example, I can do a touch new file.txt. See that? See how it made that? Now look at the permissions. Only host has read and write. Everyone else, the user, I mean the group, and everyone else just has read permissions, right? This is called the 644. If I were to go to TrueNOS and log in as anything but root, no one would be able to make an adjustment on this. So that's kind of like, eh. It, it automatically adopted the 568 permissions because that's what the media path already has. So it's just inheriting that. but. The user is no good. So the question then becomes, how do I do this in the event that um, I want to be able to make an adjustment here? So let's come back to TrueNOS. Let's go to our credentials. Let's go to our users. So I'm going to recreate this. Disable password. 
and I want this to be a thousand. And the reason I need it to be a thousand is because it needs to match what's on my host system. I want to create a new primary group. And I don't want to make this a, a sub user. Let's save that. Well, I guess we're going to have to do a group. There we go. Okay. So now host is a thousand. Come back over here. Okay. Notice now that host here matches host here. The reason for that is the numbers are the same behind the ID. And this is why permissions are complicated because when I set this up originally, I totally forgot to make those things match. So we, <coughs> so we ended up with weird permissions issues. So now let's come back over here. If I do a nano new file, now notice I can do a read. So let's do a test. Cool. Now that test works. So that's how permissions would work in the event that I needed to do NFS with permissions. The easiest way to do this is to use the 777 permission because now I can go into any of these directories and make changes. In the event that you want to use that we have a different host system or a different computer that you're attaching to, make sure you create the user here with the correct user ID that matches the user and the user ID of the system you're trying to mount to. And then when you do that, you can change anything you want. So for example, this data set, if I have configs, these are, should be all ACL permissions. Let's look at Kuma, for example, right? Let's edit these. Now this is ACL. Here, if I wanted to add this so that my user would have access, I'm going to add an item. It's going to be a user. My user is going to be host, just like that. And I want to allow permissions, full control, and then I want to save ACL. Ah, so what it said here is that because, as I, so here's, here's this long story of that. I want to do this, but I can't. And the reason for that is the upper directory, the configs directory, doesn't have that. So I have to come back out here to my data sets, for example, configs. So I need to make a change here first. I need to add my user here first for full control and save ACL. Now all these directories can be changed underneath it for host. The reason for that is if the main directory doesn't have the option for host, none of the subdirectories are going to be able to do that. So if I was going to come to Kuma now, I want to edit this and I want to add a user and I want to be my host user and I want full control, save ACL. There we go. So now if I was going to go and share this under an NFS share, it would work. So that's how you would do permissions for your both ACLs as well as Unix permissions in the shell as well and do the mouse share.